The big emerging human rights issue for this century is human trafficking. But human trafficking is a convoluted euphemism. It's better to call it what it really is, slavery. The worst place for this scourge is India. I travel to the poor state of Bihar to see the problem firsthand. Girls are kidnapped from poor villages or easily transported across the border from nearby Nepal. Anybody who thinks that the word slavery is hyperbole should meet someone whose life has belonged to pimps and traffickers. I go to a red light district and I see women like you who are smiling, who are reaching out sometimes, uh, who are dressed nicely, and sometimes they look happier than if they were uh, working in the fields. So are they really happy or really unhappy? Red light districts in Bihar are filled with horror story after horror story. Let me quickly tell you about one of them, Mina Hasina. She is truly a heroic woman who has shown that one power even greater than a slave trader's greed is a mother's love. Mina was kidnapped from her village in India by a trafficker when she was perhaps 11 or 12. She remembers only that it was well before she had begun to menstruate. Mina was beaten and forced to accept a fate as a prostitute. Every night, Mina was forced to have sex with 10 to 25 customers. Mina thus joined the ranks of some 10 million children prostituted around the world, more in India than in any other country. I'm not exaggerating when I say that the slave plantations of the 21st century are the brothels of India. Mina's owners even wanted to breed her. So they wanted a daughter more than a son? She had two children, a boy and a girl. But they were taken from Mina shortly after they were born. The two children were raised apart from Mina. The kids were kept as hostages to ensure that their mother would not resist or flee. But a mother's love made Mina a nuisance to her owners. She tried to alert the police that she and her kids were being held captive. The police didn't lift a finger to help her. Mina's agitation did lead to one result. Her owners decided to kill her. Mina learned of the plot and escaped to a town several hours away. Do you ever wonder, you know, if maybe you did the wrong thing, if maybe this is the custom, you should just let it be. I will never accept uh, the prostitution of myself, my family, my daughters, or anybody as long as I can live, I can breathe. As long as they kept me hostage and in captivity, I could not say anything. But now that I'm free, I will never succumb to them. It is not in our blood to be prostituted, uh, so why should we accept it? Mina found help from a terrific anti-trafficking organization called Apni Ap. Even now, they are, they, you know, the women get beaten up, uh, they get shouted at, they get abused for coming here. But they continue in spite of all of this. Apni Op is run by a former journalist named Ruchira Gupta. <laughs> Ruchira covered trafficking and was so horrified by what she found that she quit her job and devoted her life to fighting the brothel owners. Ruchira got the police to raid Mina's old brothel and rescue her daughter from the flesh trade. That girl is now recovering in hospital. As for the brothel, it is still operating. The police have not arrested the main traffickers. 
Mina and her children remain in great danger, but for now, against all odds, she is reunited with her family. We need to help people like Mina and Ruchira. They are the vanguard of a new global abolitionist movement. This is an issue crying out for world leaders and community groups alike to seize and run with. Both the left and right are marshalling forces to join the fight. But I'm afraid that the typical distractions are going to get in the way. Ruchira, as you know, in the U.S., uh, both left and right have been engaged in the trafficking issue, but they tend to disagree about it in almost every aspect, whether do you call them the people sex workers, do you call them prostitutes, uh, is this something that should be banned, is it something that should be legalized and regulated? Is this whole debate something that, you know, is helpful to somebody like you who's at the grassroots trying to fight the problem? First of all, I find that the left has become like the right and the right has become like the left. So all these lines are sort of blurred because, you know, the responses are so uh, different from what I would expect from the right or from the left. Uh, and uh, the debate is sort of uh, being carried on by uh, theoretical uh, framers of the issue in uh, universities, but uh, very few of them are coming down to the grassroots and seeing what the struggle is, what little girls are fighting for. Uh, how bravely they are resisting the traffickers or how much they want a new life and the tenacity with which they uh, grab any opportunity or chance they can get or how their mothers are standing up to all the forces of uh, poverty, of sexism, of the caste system and still trying to uh, navigate an existence. And here, you know, it sounds like a stupid idea when people say legalize prostitution because it seems that we will be not even acknowledging the desire for change that these little girls and these women have. And that is what is relevant. The whole debate about what should we call this and what should we not call this problem is irrelevant. The problem exists and we have to solve it and we have to solve it in the best interest of the child and the best interest of the mother which is not to fight for the right to be prostitutes but the right to be rocket scientists and teachers and doctors. We shouldn't allow political polarization and hang-ups to get in the way of a united front against sex slavery. While people can disagree about legalization of prostitution as such, Everybody should be able to agree that teenage girls shouldn't be enslaved against their will in brothels. And that is the daily reality in much of the world. And that is what we need to focus on. In India, for the New York Times, I'm Nicholas Kristof.